this is the, the homework number four, problem three. So we are talking about the supporting rod, and then it has the tensile stress of 10 uh, KSI, and there's the constituted law regarding the crib uh, <clears throat> strain. And then we have the assumptions of the stress zero is gonna be constant, and we have some values of H, which is the activation energy for tree. And then we have the following questions, which is the activation energy at each stress. So at each stress, the activation energy is going to be different. So we have to find out the H values uh, in terms of like different stress value. And then you have to find the M, which is the creep exponent, find the stress naught, and then you'll have to calculate if the rod uh, elongates more than 10%, then what would be the lifetime, which means that you have to calculate uh, the, creeps, uh, the strain rate, and then you multiply with time. In that case, this is gonna be strain values. And then these 10% would be the references. So based on this information, we'll give you the maximum strain, and then you know the strain rate, then you can find the T. So this is the, the basic procedures to uh, solve this problem. Actually, yeah, that already answered my question. Mm -hmm. uh, because the problem I was having was the time I was getting was like a thousand something hours. Okay. Uh, which let's, seemed small. Mm -hmm. let, let's see how it goes. I mean, okay. so anyway, we have to read this kind of graph. And then, as you know, this is a log scale and this is mm -hmm. just a, the numeric scale. In that case, like students have like problems in reading the law scale because the small, tiny, like yeah. can be result in very large uh, values of differences. So right. honestly, like if the answer is thousand hours and then your answer is gonna be like 1200, something like that, then I would say it is okay. So okay. If, I mean, I don't know about the detailed rubrics right now, but like as long as your answer is like less than 10%, then okay. Like, but like if your answer is gonna be like a thousand, like, like million time, million hours or something like that, and I can give you the full program. Yeah, that's fair. Let's, let's see how it goes. So, okay, in order to solve the M, H, or sigma naught, and then the strain rate or something like that, we have a graph, and that graph actually has the strain rate in y-axis log scale, because this is like log scale actually, like 10 to two, nine, minus two, 10 to nine, minus four, something like that. This is the temperature and this is a one over T. And this one over T is a ranking uh, scale. And then we have like three values, which is the 20 KSI, 10 KSI and six KSI. As you know, we are having a constant tensile stress with just a 10 KSI. So eventually when you actually calculate the lifetime, you have to consider the values of this. However, in the problem number A, you actually have to answer the activation energy at each stress. So you have to be uh, considering the different uh, stress values out of this. But make sure that these graphs can be changed, which, which means that the y-axis could be like usually um, the strain rate in log scale, but this x-axis sometime like it can be, uh, instead of temperature, it could be the stress values. Or so in this case, like we have a different uh, temperature line, something like that. So no worries, like eventually what we have to do is to finding the exact like good values of H and M. And then as long as you find a, a follow up, the ver follow up the procedures, then it'll be all okay. Anyway, we have the graph like this, and then let's move on from the constituted law. Everyone knows this constituted law. And then this constituted law is actually right here. So as long as you like starting the question, you will be able to see some kind of constituted law regarding the uh, creep. And then this is the constituted law. And then we have a little assumption, which is the sigma uh, one one is constant, then this gal is gonna be uh, like neglected. And then you will be able to know the H, which is the activation energy can be calculated based on the K, which is the Boltzmann constant. And also the difference, that difference between these different strains and the one over T. So it's, as long as you have I mean, as long as you know this kind of differences, you will be able to find the H values, which is the first questions uh, in each stress. So let's move on. So remember to stress. Let's move on like how we read the graph. So everyone have a different style. So I don't care as long as you have the right values. And as I mentioned, 
the graph is not that accurate, so it will be going to be a little different. But I mean, let's try to move like. Let's try to start. I, I'll try to show how I did. So, for example, the first stress is going to be 6 KSI, which is right here, this one. So, this one in this case, we have to find the H based on the equation of this. So, K is already known, and then we have to find the different values of the strain, the strain rate, and then 1 over T. In this case, you will have to find that the K is right here, and then the difference is like from this point and this point, that's what I did. So like this is the 10 to negative three, right? And then I just found out I draw the line from like 10 to negative three and then moving down, it's gonna be, um, I don't know, it, it's not that accurate. As I mentioned, it's not that accurate. It could be like 6.3, it could be like 6.25, but honestly for me, like this one looks me, like this one looks like 6.35, very similar to this value. So I just find out like 10 to negative three uh, and then 6.35. And the next one is I just try to find values right here, which is the 10 to negative five. And then I just move on here and, and find the X values, which is one over T It's like 6.7. This is just not the log scale. So, I mean, as long as you skip one values from the log scale, then it's gonna be very easy. And then it doesn't matter, you can go from here and then you can read this value, it's up to you. I mean, it, as I mentioned, this is not gonna be very accurate. But in this case, 10 to negative three is equal to like 6.35, which is 10 to negative four right here. And then 10 to negative five is equal to like 6.7, 10 to negative four. So we have to calculate the differences of each values and it will result in the 8.93, uh, times 10 to negative 18, which is the activation energy. As I mentioned, these values can be different, def definitely different. This could be like six, or it could be like nine, or it could be like 12 or something like that. It's okay. So what you have to do is you have to clearly show that how you actually find your values. So this equation is very important when you actually solve the problem in meter number two. Because for example, even though you follow the very nice method, but your value is a lot different and then you don't have this equation, then I cannot give you the credits about this question. Same thing, like I have to calculate the activation energy in its state, its stress state, the 10 KSI, which is right here. 10 KSI, the same way you can starting from here to here, or you can starting from here to here, it's totally up to you as long as your values are very like similar to the answer. So as I mentioned, I'm starting from like 10 to negative three, which is equals to like, I don't know, but it's about like 6.76, something like that. So I will, I will just say 6.65, something like that. And then this is gonna be here and then 10 to negative four, it's about like 10 to one five. And then I put here and then I calculate it. It will give you the 6.25. It's okay if you have five or if you have four, if you have 10, it's okay. However, maybe, I don't know, maybe the, because of the slope, the value is gonna be a little, like have some trends, but I don't know. I mean, I have some kind of specific rubric. So as long as you find out the, right way with the equations, then it will be okay. And then if, as long as these values are very similar, like not that different, like 10 to negative 17 or 10 to negative like 20, that could also be possible. But it, I mean, these kind of like minor differences will not give you the big difference when you actually calculate the cyclic lifetime. Um, I'm sorry about that, the total lifetime. Okay, that's the answer for the 10 KSI. And then let's find the 20 KSI, which is right here. And also like 10 to negative three is equals to 7.2. 10 to negative five is equals to 7.7. .7. And then the Boltzmann constant is all here. And this one is all same. So I find that this 6.25 as the activation energy. Definitely the, depending on how accurate one reads the graph, this number might vary a little. However, these minor changes will give you the very minor differences in total lifetime. So please make it clear, clear uh, when you actually solve the problem. Let's move on to number B, which is like regarding the uh, M, which is crib exponent. And then crib exponent is based on the, the constant, can be calculated based on the constitutive law with the assumption that the T is constant, which means that you have to 
make one values of t one over this is one over t but anyway like you have to find like make a constant one over like t and then you have to read the strain rate in order to find the m values i think i think you know like all of the procedures it doesn't have to be like this value i mean i mean some like look at cbc uh, in the questions maybe it's this one like thousand fahrenheit but it doesn't have to be this thousand Fahrenheit to solve the activation, I mean, to solve the creep exponent, any T would be okay, as long as you make the T is constant. So I just choose this like seven, which is the one over T, but this is my arbitrary number. You can just select here, you can just select here. As long as you actually, one straight line includes all of the three points, then any lines would be very possible. So I just choose this seven as the one over T value, and then I read, the strain rate uh, at each state, uh, it's, it's uh, stress. So 20 KSI, 10 KSI, and 6 KSI. In this case, what after, after that, what I have to do is to, I have to uh, draw another graph and then Y axis should be the strain rate, the X axis should be the stress, the log scale. So as I mentioned, like if the X axis is like stress and this line is our individual temperature, then these line is gonna be the temperature value. So just make sure what graph actually you're reading. We are actually reading the lines based on the different stress values. So we are reading the strain rate at different stress values in log scale. And then the final M value is gonna be the slope. The slope of the, the line we actually get from this uh, reading. and this is not, this could be not that linear, but we are assumed that it is the linear. So what I did, I mean, everyone has a different procedures, but what I did is that we have three points. So we actually measure the slope, one, two, two, three, and one, three, and then I just get the average value. So in order to find the, the M, which is the slope of the graph right here, it is like, it's all log scale. So this one over, uh, this one over this one, this one over this one, and this one over this one, right, which is right here. And then I calculate each M1, M2, and M3. In case of M1, it's like three, which is the pink one. This is the three, 10 to negative five, which is the blue one. So M1 represents a slope right here. M2 represents the slope right here, right? This one, because this is three, negative seven, this is two, negative three. This one. What about the M3? This one, right? Three and 10 to five. So as long as you have the good values, it's all okay. You can just get one slope. You can just get like another slope. It doesn't matter. You have, I mean, you don't have to calculate the average. It, if this takes too long time, you don't have to do it. However, the values like ideally can be calculated with this kind of averaging method. So what I found is like nine, 7.3 and six, an average value is gonna be 7.462. and as I mentioned, depending on how accurate one reads the graph, this number can be changed. However, if you have like M is equals to like 0.1 or M equals to like 15 or 20, it will make, it will result in very, make a lot of problems in when you actually calculate the total strain. So try to make an average and then try to find some way. And like maybe if you're actually using a calculator in your like midterm, you have a good format and then just changing the number so that you can minimize your error or something like that. Just do it well because you have very like, limited time. Okay, I think you're in very good shape in the calculating H and M. So now actually move on to the next questions regarding the, I think the lifetime, uh, oh, the stress value first. So we have to calculate, we have to measure the stress values and then we also starting from the constituted law. Now, since we actually, uh, know the values of H and M. So this is known values. And then the sigma naught is unknown right now. So we have to calculate the sigma naught, okay? And then this is definitely starting from the uh, constituted law right here. And then here M, we are actually uh, multiplying like one over M in every state. So this one's gonna be this. This one's gonna be like one over M. So it's gonna be deleted. This one's gonna be like M is like divided right here. What we are doing is to find the sigma naught. Right, so this one's going here, this one going down here. So the final question, uh, equation is something like this. Okay, everything looks good. And then what was the C? Let's move on one more time. The C is actually the fine sigma naught, which is the normalizing stress. So we have to find the sigma naught based on this 
equation and we have to find like uh, this value, this value, this value. But from this point, I think the sigma naught is like considering the real situation of the problem. And then this uh, structure is actually having a tensile stress, which is 10 KSI, which is right here. So you have to, sorry, like moving a lot. So you have to fix the 10 KSI right here, all right? So if you actually given like temperature, you have to fix the temperature anyway. So after that, you know this, yeah, you know this equation, you are finding this, you are knowing this one, which is 10 KSI. This is known values based on the problem. This one is assumed as one. And then <clears throat> this one, which is uh, strain rate one one, is actually the resultant strain rate because of the tensile stress, which is 10 KSI. So you have to read the temperature, which is like 1460R from here. 1460R is like, 1 over t, this is 1 over t. So actually, when you calculate the 1 over t here, then it's going to be 6.85, 10 to negative 4. So when you read this here and then go to like 10 KSI and read the strain rate, which is uh, corresponding to 10 to negative 4 right here. So the blue color is known values. This green color is like we are already known from the problems. This is like a measure values. Okay, the H. We already know from the previous question, which is 6.25. Where I think it's gonna be right here, right? 6.25, 6.25. Not this one, this is based on the 20 KSI. We are reading actually 10 KSI. So this one is the information that we have to use. Okay, so 6.25 right here. And then we know the M, this is all the same. We already calculated from the previous question, 7.462, so organize it well. We know the Boltzmann constant. So now we inserted every values into here. So sigma naught is equals to 10 KSI, which is the 10,000 PSI. And then this is assumed as one. This one is equals to 10 to negative four. So right here, M is equals to 7.462 right here. Exponent H, which is 6.25 and MKT, MKT, right? So the answer is gonna be 7.35 PSI. As I mentioned, these values can be differently, definitely changed because you have a different values of H, you have a different values of M. So the value is gonna be very different. Honestly, my answer is a little different to the solution of the previous member. The previous, the original solution was like nine or something, but I don't care, you know, seven, nine, 10, it doesn't make any difference. However, if you have like thousand or if you have like 150, that makes a lot of difference. So make sure that you, you know, you're actually calculating the right way. Now, the final answer is the, the total lifetime. As I mentioned, the, the total lifetime is T, and T can be calculated with the strain rate because the strain rate is assumed to be constant. And then this one, multiply T is the total strain. So this one, can be calculated with this information. However, even though we know this is the constant, we don't, but we don't know it yet. So we have to calculate the strain rate at the certain condition. But uh, luckily we already know the value and we know the constituted law. Every information is known right now. We know this one is like assume as one. This one is 10 KSI. This one is the right here. We already calculated the 7.35 as the sigma naught. And then we know H, K, T, M. Everything is known value. So it is all about like calculation or math. So we inserted every values, 10 KSI, 7, 3, and like this and that, so that we can get the strain rate is equals to 0 0.0001004 sine 6. I mentioned that like two decimal points is very important. However, this one, like I think the detail, like uh, more and more numbers gonna be important. I mean, it's like a sense when you actually well, solve the problem, but in this case, like try to like find the values as accurate as possible because these like small digits will give you a lot of differences, right? So anyway, we could calculate the strain rate right here. And then the strain one one is like, 0.1 because the problem says the reference strain is going to be 10%, right? Where is it? The, the problem told us that uh, the rod elongates more than 10% must be replaced. So our maximum the total strain is going to be 10%. So that's why 
or second, this one is going to be 0.1, and this, the, my answer, which is the creep life, is 1,000 hours. So if you actually get the num like hours of like 1,000, perfect, same as mine. If you have like 10,000, okay, but like I think it's going to be very diff different. In the real world, like 1,000 hours and 10,000 hours is going to be a lot different, right? Okay, so this is the, the procedures. And one more thing I want you to recognize, remember, is that this values, what is my assumptions right here? My assumption is that the total strain uh, epsilon 1, 1 is equals to the crypt strain. So honestly, the total strain could be the sum of the elastic strain and the plastic strain and also the crypt strain, right? So if you actually got this, like time, you are actually based on one assumption, which is that the elastic strain and the plastic strain is neglected or negligible, something like that. So you have to find out this is okay or not. So if you actually have some kind of the values of like Young's modulus, so in this question, you don't have any Young's modulus, right? But you all, you calculate the sigma naught, right? You know the sigma naught. And if you know the, the, the stiffness, which is the Young's modulus of this material, then you can actually calculate the elastic strain, which is sigma naught over E. So at this, at this problem, like you don't know about the E, so you don't have to think about this assumption. But if you know the stiffness values, you have to double check on that. So insert that E value, which is Young's modulus, and also insert this 7.35, which is sigma naught. If these values are very like, like this value, then this one is neglected. So you have to double check that these sigma naught is like result in like neglecting well to the elastic strain. Then you can go to the assumption that the total strain is equal to the crib strain because the elastic strain and plastic strain is almost negligible. So make sure that you use all of the information and write all of the assumption if you get the full credit. I think you know about my style. I'm not like trying to fail you. I'm trying to help you to understand this like course and lectures. Um, I'm always trying to grade you with a very generous rule. However, if like, uh, if you miss some kind of these assumptions, then it's going to be very critical because some kind of questions will actually, you know, have a very different situation, such as like elastic strain is like not hardly, uh, hard to be neglected, something like that. So make sure you write all of the assumptions when you actually have a midterm number two or exams. Okay, uh, I think this is very straightforward. So let's move on to the next problems in homework number four.